Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. So this video is a book review of Our Spoons Came From Woolworths by Barbara Commons. This book is about a 21 year old woman called Sophia who meets a man on a train called Charles. They're both carrying artist portfolios, they both get chatting, one thing leads to another, they quickly fall in love and quickly decide to get married. However, their idyllic, artistic, bohemian, 19th and 30s London lifestyle quickly changes when Sophia gets pregnant. Now, Charles is not a paternal man. He doesn't really care for children. All he cares about is art. And he doesn't want to go to work. He doesn't want to provide for himself and his family. He wants to stay at home and paint pictures all day. And therefore, they have to live off the money that Sophia earns as an artist model, which isn't a lot at all. And because of this, their marriage becomes under a lot of stress and strain. This book has a fair few ups. At times I am laughing with it, but there is also a lot of downs. This book is sometimes quite tragic as well. This book covers topics of um, infant mortality. It covers adultery. It covers poverty. It also, I think, is a good reflection of women's place in the home at this time and the stresses that a lot of women face from their husbands. Not saying for all of them, but I think it is very much a book of its period. On the surface, I think this book looks a bit like a comic uh, reflection of the 1930s bohemian artist set. However, if you scratch the surface just a little bit deeper, you'll see how dark and tragic it is. This book to me is very special and there's a couple of reasons why. First off, the amount of Barbara, the author herself, is in this book. Herself and her life is very much entwined in this book and Sophia's stories. So much so that this doesn't actually feel like a fictional book anymore, it feels like a memoir. Barbara just free flows, it feels like Sophia is telling us her memoir, telling us her story. Barbara and Sophia are very similar. Barbara has free flowed and put herself into Sophia. So for instance, there's little small reflections and small similarities like the animals, for instance, Barbara bred poodles and there's a poodle in this, but there's also bigger things like Barbara herself married an artist, Sophia is married to an artist. Barbara at one point in her life was an artist model, Sophia is an artist model. There's a lot of similarities, like that semi-autobiographical um, thing going on here, which I think makes the book seem very, as I said, free-flowing, very relaxed and very real. It also makes me wonder though, how much of Barbara's story has she left out there? Is any other aspect of it true? The darker stuff, is that true too? Um, so my heart not only goes out to Sophia in this book, but also to Barbara too. The other bit about this book which makes it very special to me is the writing style. The writing is, for me, very special. It is done in Sophia's narrative voice. So Sophia is telling us a story and the story goes in full circle. So you know that she survives because she's telling the story. Um, there are points in this book where I thought, oh no, she's, she's going to die. And then I realised, well, no, she can't because she's the one telling the story. But I finished this book and then I reread the beginning again. I was hooked after about two pages of this book. And I'm going to read you um, the very first bit of the book and hopefully you'll be just as intrigued as I was. I told Helen my story and she went home and cried. In the evening her husband came to see me and brought me some strawberries. He mended my bicycle too and was kind but he needn't have been, because it all happened eight years ago and I'm not unhappy now. I hardly dare admit it, even touching wood, but I'm so happy that when I wake in the morning I can't believe it's true. I seldom think of the time I was called Sophia Fairclough. I try to keep the push right to the back of my mind. I can't quite forget it because of Sandro, and I often find myself regretting lovely little Fanny. I wish I hadn't told Helen so much. It brought everything back in a vivid flash. I can see Charles's white pointed face and hear his husky nervous voice. I kept remembering things all the time. And then the next paragraph starts. We met for the first time on a railway journey and that is where we just jump into the story. This book is very fast paced. I was so hooked. I never knew what was gonna happen next. It's a small book. It's just shy of 200 pages, but 
there's a lot in here. For me, the combination of the writing style and Barbara herself in this book really sells it to me. It makes it feel very unique. I was so addicted to this book, I loved it so much. I am very much a lover of early 20th century books about women's lives and that's what this is. I adored it. I actually found myself driving home from work thinking I can't wait to read this book. I hope Sophia is okay. I couldn't help but put my heart out to Sophia and that never happens to me. I, I usually am driving home and I think oh yeah I can't wait to read my book but I'm never thinking about the character. I'm usually thinking what's going to happen next not oh I hope they're okay which I was so connected to this book. To me Sophia is very very real and she lives within these pages. So that's it for my review of Our Spoons Came From Wars by Barbara Commons. If you want to get your hands on a copy, it'll be linked in the description bar below. Just click that link, it'll take you straight to the book depository. In the comments section, please let's have a discussion about this book. Have you read this book? Did you love it as much as I did? If you haven't read it, is it now on your wish list? Or do you have any questions about it? Let's just have a chat because I love this book so much and I want to talk to you guys about it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you're all well. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.